glad it. Amen? Amen. I want to welcome you all to our worship service here at the Green Street campus of Cornerstone First Global Methodist Church. We are so thrilled and excited to have all of you here with us this morning. I want to share some announcements within the life of the church for this upcoming week and this upcoming month. If you have not already, please make sure you sign in on the attendance pads at the end of your pews. That way we can stay in communication with you, connected with you as part of the body of Christ. If you would do that for us, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And especially if you're visiting here with us today, if you would make sure that you sign that attendance pad doubly so. And that you get some contact information put down there so that we can reach out to you uh, early this week. We are beginning to collect some plastic eggs for, uh, in preparation for our Easter egg hunt that's coming up uh, right around the, the Holy Week time. So I believe talking with Miss Glinda, our goal is to get about 1,000 filled plastic eggs for our, our littles in the community and within our church to be able to come and be able to, to, to find and root out and all that. So if you'd like to participate uh, in that planned uh, form of a ministry, form of outreach, uh, we are be more than happy to take some, some filled plastic eggs from, from y'all. If you would prefer rather to just support that with some cold hard cash, we'll accept that too. Uh, so please, if you would uh, like to participate in that, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I've taken some time off the last couple weeks, uh, or last week rather, to go and, and spend some time on the, the beach and uh, get some curriculum planned for our discipleship process. So uh, back in the fall, I had done a How to Read the Bible class. Uh, had just given some basic tools and skill sets uh, to be able to search those scriptures that are ancient, timeless, and true. Uh, so I am excited to announce that that group that we had journeyed with back in the fall will continue in the spring here to apply these skills into the Gospel of John. Now, those folks who had taken the class back in the fall, we're going to be starting back same time, same place, Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock in the choir room, beginning on March 22nd. So that's not this upcoming Wednesday, but the Wednesday following. And I'm so thrilled and excited to walk through John with those folks. Now, if that piques your interest, if you'd like to develop those school skills and tools to be able to study the scriptures... Uh, we're going to have a 101 class where those basics will be taught again. So that will be taking place on March 26th, that Sunday. Uh, I have not settled on a time yet, but I'll announce that next Sunday when that group will be able to meet and develop those skills and tools to study Scripture. So that's an exciting time for, for us as we begin this discipleship process together. We're going to have a reception next Sunday after the Arbor service at 10 o'clock for our facilities manager, Correll. As many of you may know, Carell Pritchard has been a fantastic asset to this church. He has served it so faithfully, but he has received a fantastic offer over at Russell Land, so he is preparing to leave us. And we are so thrilled and excited for the next chapter of, of Carell's life and for Wendy and for their, their family. So we're going to celebrate him together at the end of the Arbor service next Sunday uh, at 10 o'clock. So just want to make sure that that is on your radar to wish Carell well next time you see him. We are going to have an orientation on March 26th. That should be the last Sunday of this month at 10 o'clock over in the Arbor. If you are a new member who has recently joined us, or if you're someone who is wanting to join us or is in that discernment process to find a new church, that meeting is for you. You've probably heard plenty about what the Global Methodist Church is not, so we want to share with you what the Global Methodist Church is and be able to give that opportunity of, of information and community and fellowship. So that interests you, again, please make note that that's going to be uh, March 26th at 10 o'clock in the Arbor directly after that service has concluded, right there on the floor. So we'd love to have you come and be a part of that. Holy Week is swiftly approaching, and we have multiple different exciting uh, ways to worship the risen Lord together during that time. Uh, too many to go through in these announcements, to be quite honest with you. So uh, we're going to have a flyer that's drafted up to be able to distribute that information to folks in the church. And that's already out on our social media. So if you go to Facebook, if you go to the church website, wherever you go, you should be able to find that information listed there about all the opportunities to worship Christ together as one people uh, during Holy Week. So we are excited for that time of, of worship together. And one final announcement. Uh, the Cornerstone Women's Group is going to meet on this Tuesday at 10 o'clock over in the Ark. Now that is an open invitation for women who are members of the church, as well as women who are in our community or women who are discerning joining the church. Whether you're a part of us in membership or not, it doesn't matter. All are welcome. So if you'd like to come and find some fellowship uh, among our folks, you are more than welcome to, to do so in that opportunity. Whew. 
that's a lot of announcements this morning. We've got an exciting time that's taking place in the life of this church. We are so thrilled to celebrate it. Now, as we prepare our hearts for worship, let's go before our Lord together in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you who have created and sustained all things by your word, that same word who took on flesh, who came to dwell among us, and who died to save sinners. We draw near to you this morning because you are infinitely worthy of our worship. You are greatly worthy to be praised. You have caused your grace, like rain, to fall upon the heads of the just and the unjust. You make your mercies new before us each and every day. And it is in the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the witness of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, to the glory of our Heavenly Father, that we who believe now, by grace through faith, have received light and life, abundantly and eternally, here, now, and forevermore. It is because of that precious gift of grace that we come together this morning as one people, as your body, your church, to worship you in the fullness of spirit and truth here in this hour. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your spirit on all of us who are gathered here, in person as well as online, that you would not only be the object of our worship here today, but the very power and very authority by which we worship that our worship may be to your glory and for the good of your church. Father, we love you. We trust you. We surrender this time now and the fruit of it into your care. In Christ's name, amen. you to stand with us and let's join together as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 368, My Hope is Built. Let's sing.
you would remain standing for our Apostles' Creed, it's numbered 881 in your hymnal, let us unite this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, if you will greet each other, and towards the end of that, if our children would come down front for our children's minute, do that now.
How are y'all today? Y'all good? Well, I'm not exactly Irish, but this month we celebrate the country of Ireland. And this week there's a special <coughs> holiday called St. Patrick's Day. And that's why I have green on, because it's our favorite color. Well, let me tell you a little bit about St. Uh, Patrick. St. Patrick was a real man, and he was a missionary. And he was a missionary, and he worked at bringing Christianity to the, to the country of Ireland. And this story is very amazing. But also the story of how people received <laughs> his message and accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. But there's a lot of things that goes on in Ireland, and some of the cute things and the fun things is they love this color right here. What color do I have on again? Green. Green, and so does Melanie. She has on green today, too. Make sure on Friday that you all wear green, because you know what happens if you don't wear green. You get pinched. So make sure you got your green on. There's some interesting traditions like leprechauns and fairies and shamrocks and clovers, and they think things like being lucky. Do y'all know what this is? A leaf? Sort of. A clover? It's actually called a shamrock. And the Irelands think if you can find one that has four leaves on it, that you are very lucky. One, two, three. So this one's not it. When I was a little girl, I used to love to try to find one of the shamrocks, and because I wanted to be lucky. I didn't realize that I was already lucky, but actually I am blessed because God is in control. We're going to learn something, okay? I'm going to point to you, and I want you to say God is in control. You ready? Let's do it really loud. One, two, three. All right, guys, y'all got to help. <laughs> One, two, three. God is in control. All right, we got to do louder than that. One, two, three. God is in control. Yes, God is in control. And people like to be lucky because they think they're doing a great thing. Everybody likes to have money. But do you know what? There's other things that people think that are lucky, like a penny. If you find a penny in a road, they think that that's being lucky. Also, what is this? A bunny. Some people think if you rub his foot that you'll, get, you'll be lucky. You want to rub his foot? You know what? That's pretty cool. It feels pretty good, right? But I don't think you're lucky just because you rub his foot. But this is like a, a play one. This is one I got for Easter. But I don't really think if you really did have a rabbit, if you rubbed his foot, you would be lucky. Because the Bible says that God is in control of everything, no matter what you're going through. And some people think there's bad luck, like breaking a mirror, walking under a ladder. That gives you bad luck. But really, there's no such thing. Because God is in what? God is in control. No matter what you're going through, no matter what bad your day is, how bad your test is going, no matter what, it, God's got a plan. And God knows the end of the story. He knows how it's going to turn out. And his plans are so much better than ours. So much better. So, next time you somebody says you're lucky, you need to tell them that you are blessed. Because what? God is in what? Control. God is in control. All right. Let's do a <laughs> prayer together, please. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for blessing us with all these children. And Lord, let them realize that they are blessed because of everything that you've given them for their wonderful home and their family, this beautiful church, the people in the church, that they are so blessed. We love you and we need you. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys, I got you a surprise. One of the things for St. Patrick's Day that they love is gold. So I'm going to give all of you some gold, and you look at this and remind yourself, hey, I'm lucky or I'm what? Blessed. You are what, KK? Blessed. Do it loud. Blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Here you go. Okay. Okay. 
And also, on St. Patrick's Day, they love the rainbow because they think at the end of the rainbow is a pot of what? Gold. So I'm going to give you some of these, and it has all the rainbow colors in it. Isn't that cool? All right. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Emily, y'all can go back now. You did fantastic. You were unbelievably good. <laughs> Let's prepare our hearts for prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Dear Father God, we have so much to be thankful for. All we've got to do is to look at the front row and think about the responsibilities that we have as your followers to leave a legacy to this next generation that can grow and become all that we have not been, leaders that bring your truth to the world. We lift up those that need your healing touch in their life. Father, we pray that physically or spiritually that you touch them and use us as part of that touch. For our wonderful country that was founded by men who placed your values and your morals first, and we would pray that you would also lead our leaders of today that they would be stirred by your spirit and make decisions based upon your truth. We're thankful for families and the opportunity that we as a church have to make a difference in the life of a young person. And Father, most of all and above all, we're thankful that we are here today because you loved us enough that you sent your only son to die for us so that we could be forgiven of those things that separate us from you and be one with you. And that whatever happens in their life, we will always never be alone. You're always with us. There's no trial too great, no mountain too high. You'll never depart us. And with that assurance, can we go into this world and live the kind of witness in our life that will let the world know who you are and what you can do. Father, we're just so thankful for all the blessings we have on this church and we would be grounded in our faith and know that it is your Son that is the foundation of all that we do. Forgive us of our sins, for we pray in the name of him who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, we'd like to invite you to join us on hymn number 371, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. And if we invite you to stand as you are able, and let's lift our voices. Verses 1, 2, and 5, first, second, and last. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the
seated, please. If our ushers would now come forward, we'll worship with our tithes and our offering. Father God, we will never think that dollars and cents will make the difference in our giving to you, but it's only until we give all that we are, all that we have to you that you can use us for your glory. Take this offering, use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Be seated, please. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, 3rd through the 6th verse, and then flipping over to the 14th and 15th. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, brother and father of all, who is over all and is through all. Flipping over to the 15th and 16th verse. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body is joined held together by every support, every ligament grows and builds itself up in love as every part does its word. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
was fantastic. It's not going to be uh, the rule, but the exception to the rule is that this message today, it means so much to me that I'm going to do it at the Arbor next week too. <laughs> I'm normally not going to do that. And I would like to put in a clause that says, I don't think that I'm capable of being able to express this truth as great as it is. But if you'll help me out with the Spirit of God, you know, maybe, maybe that will work. So I would like for the words that I say and the thoughts that we think in the moments that follow be to glorify Christ. Let us pray. Amen, and thank you. Well, the title of this message is Unity in Christ, the Power of One. Unity is something that not only we are in the process, I think, of experiencing, but it is a huge part of the Bible, especially the New Testament, you know, the importance of unity. Now, let's make sure we get this straight because before we can talk about what it is, let's talk about what it's not. It's not unity for the sake of unity. Let's face it, there are a lot of different kinds of unity. We're pretty unified on Saturday when we pull for our favorite team. I would say there's unity there, but it's founded on only one thing, and that thing is really, in the great scheme of things, not that important. There's unity that has been abused and misused. A guy named Adolf Hitler convinced Millions and millions of Germans that it was the right thing to do to kill all the Jews. They had unity. Jim Jones had unity when he asked 912 people to drink cyanide poisoning, and they did. Because they had unity and believed in a very terrible leader. Charles Manson had unity with the group he called his family as he ordered them to go out and murder Let's make sure that we understand we're not talking about worldly unity. We're talking about the one and only kind of unity that can exist within the church and within the people of God. That's the kind of unity that we're talking about. It requires us, it requires us to be selfless. I love that word. You can't have unity unless you sacrifice some of yourself for the good of others. I mean, it was Paul uh, that, that made that statement so abundantly clear uh, when he said, uh, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, and do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in all humility count others as more significant as you. That's not easy. Thinking more of other people than we think of ourselves is quite the challenge. But it is a necessary requirement of the kind of unity that we need here in the body of Christ. So I mean, we need to understand what it's not. The, the song, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, one of my favorites and appropriate song, is this. And then we'll go on to the next point. How can you look at someone in the body of Christ and have anything against that person in any way, knowing that Jesus Christ died for them, just like He died for you. To have true unity in the church, we must recognize nobody is more important than anybody else. In fact, others are better. And what binds us together is that Jesus died for every single person in the body of Christ. We can't hold grudges. We can't think less of. Now, we've talked about what unity is not. Let's talk about this power of one thing. Well, where does that come from? I speak to a lot of groups, a lot of young people, leadership groups and businesses and stuff. And I will always start out usually with how important one person can be. I, I mean, I believe that. One person can change the world, and it, that has been demonstrated. One person. And I try to get young people to think about how they, in and of themselves, can make a difference. But that's not the type of one we're talking about. Coach Bryant talked about putting a team out there that had one heartbeat. He talked about one was one of his favorite words. But that's not 
what we're talking about. We're talking about oneness that comes from the collective oneness. Not from individual oneness. The kind of collective oneness that comes when we're all on the same page for Christ. When Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of the church. And when the truth is the plumb line that goes out from the cornerstone that guides us in everything that we do. That is the kind of oneness that we're talking about. One of the greatest stories of this in the Bible is the book of Acts. Right after the church comes together, Pentecost has already happened, and the church becomes one. And it's pretty obvious that great things are happening. And it also says that the Lord adds to their numbers daily because they have created oneness in the, in the Spirit of God. I love this verse. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. Obviously, they didn't have all things in the world, but they had all things in their spirit in common and in serving God in common, in common the early church. This is remarkable. Oneness starts with the Shema of, of, of the Old Testament. We know the Shema as all the other laws were put into these two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said all law goes into those two. But what we don't think about is the verse of Scripture that comes prior to those two commandments. And that Scripture is from Deuteronomy 6.4 that says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's where one starts. It starts... Our Lord is one. The first four words of the, the Bible are, in the beginning, God. There was nothing else. There was only God. And while it's politically incorrect, maybe, to talk, to talk about all the gods that are being worshipped out there, there are no other gods. There's only God, Jehovah God. He was the only one at the beginning. And He is the only God now. No matter how many we create on our own, we start with that. So, we've got oneness in God. Then before we know it, Jesus is saying, I and the Father are one. So there it is again. Except this time, it tells us that Jesus is God. That they're actually one. That God took His only Son. And who would not call their Son part of them? Let's not get into that argument. Every one of us that has a son, that's part of us. God sent His Son to this earth and Jesus said, He who has seen Me has seen the Father. In the world where millions of people are searching for God and going everywhere to do it, you only have to look at Jesus. If you look at Jesus, then you know what the truth is and you know how we're supposed to live and you know how we're supposed to react when adversity comes. Simply look at Jesus because I and the Father are one. The next step we take is even more fascinating because later we find out in Ephesians 2.18 for through Him we have both have access in one Spirit to the Father. Now we're talking about one Spirit. We have one God. Then Jesus says, Mine and the Father are one. Well, now we have the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was walking this earth, He could only be in one place at one time. As miraculous as He was, when somebody said, Can you come heal this person? He had to go. It took three or four days sometimes. They would bring Him people that needed healing. And the story up until that point was, we are looking for God. We're looking for God if He's behind the curtain at the temple. We're looking for God in the deserts. And we're looking for Jesus. But my daughter said, can you come and heal her? We were looking for God. But something unbelievable happened when Jesus was resurrected and He went up into heaven. It ceased to be we're looking for God and it became God comes to us. 
Because when Jesus went into the heaven, He was only one person on this earth. But then when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit was everywhere for everybody that needed the Spirit of God. And everything drastically changed. Isn't that remarkable? We go from God is one, Jesus saying, I am the Father of one, and now the Holy Spirit, the third part of that Trinity that says, through the Holy Spirit, we are all connected. And we are all one. I mean, it's just, it's just a beautiful thought. Today's Scripture talks about the body. And that's, one, that's another word for one. Huh? Did you hear the Scripture a while ago? We got one body. We're all in one. And it describes it. Yeah, we're all a different part. You've heard messages like that. I run my mouth. Maybe God can use that. But some people are different parts of the body. When one part of our body messes up, I can testify to this, you're not yourself. I mean, you need to get that fixed, right? Because all the parts of the body are important. When I smash my thumb with a hammer trying to be a construction person, then my thumb becomes an important part of my body. And I've got to get it to feeling better. We see that everywhere. The church is the body of Christ. All functioning is one. Not in separate directions. And that's another good part. Now I'm going to kind of wind down into another last thought on this. And that is the upper room. I've, I've always thought, Matthew, that the things that Jesus said in the upper room right before He was fixing to be crucified to a bunch of regular guys was important. I take everything that's said, that's where we get communion, isn't it? I mean, all the things that were said in that upper room. Here's a bunch of guys that three weeks prior to that day, they were arguing about who was the greatest. Oh yeah, several times. <laughs> arguing with each other about who was the best. Why, James is, James, uh, John and James, mom came to Jesus and said, oh, uh, one little thing, can you have them sit on both sides of you when you get up there? And Jesus said, well, you don't know what you're talking about. That's who they were. They were people that would deny Christ three times and, and, and start sinking when they took their eyes off Jesus. Just regular people like us. My favorite movie about the life of Jesus is Jesus of Nazareth. Coach, you remember that one? Jesus of Nazareth. I still got it, by the way, and I can watch it anytime I want to. But one of my favorite parts of that, and it's hilarious, is the disciples are over here doing what they do when they're together, arguing. Jesus is... You know, 15, 20 yards away. He just kind of looking over there and listening to them. Well, they get in an argument. Who's the greatest? Peter, of course, stands up in the middle of all of them and says, I don't see anyone else around here who's ever walked on water. And Jesus goes, He just kind of rolls his eyes like, I, I'm never going to teach them you know, anything. That's who Jesus was talking to in the upper room. And His prayer is pretty easily understood. I'll start with John 17, 11. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I'm coming to You, Holy Father. Keep them in Your name, which You have given Me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Father, I know that You and I are one, but I want You to make these guys one too. Another one, John 17, 21 through 23. Listen to this one. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, I'm in you, that they also may be in us. He's talking to us, you know. So that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Well, there it is. That's it. That's what the church is about. That's what the Holy Spirit came into our lives to tell us. 
that God sent Jesus into this world and that God loves you. And that's what we're supposed to do. Right there. What a prayer that Jesus prayed about the power of one. And I'll close with this. It's pretty neat to look over and around and see all these revivals going on. Right? Hey, did you hear, did you hear what happened up there in Kentucky? Why, wow, that's still going on. It's happening in Sanford now. They're great stories. I love to hear them. We need revival in this country. Why, is that, why are those revivals taking place? Because the people that are there have become one in the Holy Spirit. They've become one. If we think that people are really, really good speakers. Hey, let me tell you something. If revival's based on a really, really good speaker, we don't have a chance. We're done. <laughs> but it's not. Matthew and I can stand up and do what we do knowing it's not about that. It's about the Spirit of God. That's why those revivals are taking place. And I'm going to ask you this. Why not us? Would you please tell me why that can't happen here? You know what? The Holy Spirit came into a place and is being honored by people and is being allowed to do what God does why it can that not be us? I think it, it can. And my challenge to you is this, and to me, had you rather watch it? Had you rather talk about it? Had you rather listen to it? Or had you rather be it? Let's pray. Dear Father God, collectively and humbly we say, why not us? Father, why, why not me? If I allow Your Holy Spirit to enter into my life, why not a revival that starts right here? Because You are the author of those. And we only have to allow You to make us one and to keep our eyes and hearts fixed on Jesus, and it will be. So, Father, we're thankful for this opportunity today and pray that we will be able to live out a message that will bring us together in Christ. In His name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Get yourself another round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> get, get, gotta learn the hand signals. <laughs> We're working. <laughs> I invite you to stand. Let's sing hymn number 536. If you would like to give your life to Christ today, this open offer, or if you're interested in joining this church, uh, we invite you to come down. <clears throat>
family is going to join our church. church they were coming from. That's what I was doing up there. <laughs> so forgetful and stuff. But it is Parker Memorial Baptist Church. Baptist my fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so as I have our closing prayer, uh, welcome. We're here for you. We love you. And you guys you can get a chance to come down and just tell them what we're glad to have. Them. Practice a little bit of what we preach. That's for sure. Let's pray. Dear Father God, what an exciting day this is. We're so thankful for this family that comes to be a part of our church. And may, may we do everything that we're called to do to make sure that they feel welcome and that they can now share with us in the journey that you're taking us on. So bless their family and be with them. And, bless, and thank you for blessing us for them deciding to be a part of us. Please take us and use us in all things that we do. Give us our time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.